In this video, I'm gonna speedrun every single crockpot recipe in the entire game, ranking them from best to worst in hopes of finding out if there's more to cooking than just meatball. But first, I need to find the ingredients. There's three different locations we need to explore for this speedrun. The mainland, which we spawn in. God, dude, there's no way. The cave, which are covered by rocks. Oh, red mushroom bomb, that's actually great for us. And the ocean, which we will need to make a boat to go to in a bit. Oh, fig tree, yes. I can't focus on gathering the ingredients first though, because doing so means reducing my inventory space and possibly losing a lot of time. And this this was a great call because almost instantly I was able to find the Lunar Grotto which holds the ingredients for three extremely rare recipes. Since one of them would need me to complete the Moonstorm event to unlock its main ingredients, I decided to do that one first and get it over with. Using one collected dust and three filter of any kind makes Ambrosia, which is the highest priority recipe in the game. This means anything you put in the crockpot with collected dust will make Ambrosia no matter what. Not being edible at players and the sole purpose of making Tulusite renewable is really not that useful right now and false straight into first place with nothing else to compete with, but not for long. Back in the surface, there's still plenty of world left to explore when it's still being day 4. And so I'm keeping an eye open for important locations like the Madrid Forest, Beefalo Herds, and the Fire Traps which will come in handy later on when we get into the meat based recipes. Although I had found the rarest cave biome in the caves, checking all the entrances was still very important since things like Bunny Man meant I could get fresh vegetables any time of the year fairly easily. However, by day 5, even better than Rabbit Hoods was the singular most important part of this run, Bee Queen. Now out of all 20 bosses in this game, there's actually only one that has their own drop specific recipe, and that's Bee Queen. Pretty much the entire run depends on this single fight, but I wouldn't be able to do it until winter, so I set up my base and got to work on the first batch of recipes. Non-meat items and sticks in the crockpot will make steamed twigs, which again inedible to me, but great for food for beefalo. Filling the crockpot with berries will give Fistful a jam, which is the first edible recipe, giving us 3 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 5 sanity. A little better than eating the berries raw, but worse than eating them cooked. Not that anybody does that, right fellas? Fellas? Anyways, one meat and three edible filler will make the infamous meatballs. Providing three health, there's 62 and a half hunger and five sanity. This is probably the best hunger based dish you can make once you unlock ice during winter, taking it straight to the top of the list. But hunger isn't the only stat we're considering here. Matter of fact, I think I forgot to mention the ranking system. Now, the most important things I'll be taking into consideration is how easy the ingredients are to acquire and maintain, the difference between stats of the raw ingredients and the finished dish and obviously how good the stats uh, okay, are. Guys. I just need to get some more ingredients first. Berries, berries. With the exploration from the mainland done, I head over to the beefalo from earlier for big meat and also materials for a beefalo hat since winter will be a big part in the run. I need a lot more ingredients in this, but with the monster meat spoiling in my inventory, I throw two in a crock pot mixed with some berries, making monster lasagna, which will drain 20 health and sanity at the cost of 37 and a half hunger. Not recommended unless you're a Weber main or a tree, so I followed it up with some meat and honey in a crock pot for the boss's favorite food. Doing a solid 20 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 5 sanity. The only real downside of this dish is its 40 second cook time, blending it in a solid second place due to its semi-high health gain. One upping this, adding one more meat that's not from monsters will make honey ham, which will give a better 30 health, 75 hunger, and 5 sanity, only costing one more meat to make. Replacing the honey with vegetables though will give us spicy chili, which will provide 20 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 15 more for willow, warming us up 15 degrees when eaten too. Once again, replacing the meat with butterfly wings will then give us WX's favorite food, butter muffin which with the same stats but 5 sanity to pair. And to close off these character favorites with birch nuts, berries, and a stick, drill mix will give a slightly better healing at the cost of some of the hunger. Both are some great early game healing recipes and a lot simpler to make and faster to eat which can be a big deciding factor in the middle of the fight. And going back to hunger recipes, using 1 meat, 1 stick, and 2 filler items will give us kebabs for the grand prize of 3 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 5 sanity. Not too good at any specific stat, most of the time it's better to just eat the ingredients raw, leaving it at 8 place and trail mix and butter muffins in second and third. All these past recipes are okay at hunger and health, but we can't ignore sanity. So with 3 honey and 1 stick, Taffy will regenerate 15 sanity, 24 hunger, and at the cost of only 3 health, except for Wanda, which will consider this their favorite food, landing it in a solid 5th place due to other reasons. But here is where we step into more uncommon and some might say terrible recipes. Using 1 eggplant, 1 vegetable, and 2 filler will make stuffed eggplants, providing 3 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 5 sanity. Not too bad at first glance, but when we look at cooked eggplants, it's really not that great. Only getting worse with honestly, Clay, what were you thinking? One live mole, one cactus flesh, and two filler will give us guacamole, giving a very underwhelming 20 health, 37 and a half hunger, and zero sanity. 
Yeah, unless you're living in a desert with a moldworm duplication farm, you're Sorry, probably not going to be using it. With this batch of recipes done though, most of the easiest ones are taken care of, leading me to the next priority, farming. Now, over a quarter of the recipes in the game require a specific crop, and some even multiple different ones, which I have no control over and have to let RNG decide on. I can't even tend to them as West though, so instead of sitting around and crying, I take off to continue my exploration, not of the land, but of the sea. The ocean is the largest biome in the world, and also one of the slowest to get through. Unlike the mainland, here I only need three things. A fig tree, barnacles, and big fish. It took me the entire night and morning of rowing, and I was honestly pretty close to giving up. But I was able to find some figs which almost ended badly. But then, right in front of me was the big fish I needed. No, big fish. No, you freaking fish! Oh my god. So I turned my sights to the narwhal instead. I got some good hits in it, but with the rock jaw right by, I had no choice but to turn around, and instead, I decided to focus on trying to find the barnacles. I sailed the next day trying to find them, but with no luck, I decided to just cut my loss and head back home to cook up the figs before they spoiled, not knowing they were a lot closer than I thought. But, anyways, using big meat, two sticks, and a fig, fig kebabs will donate 20 health, 25 hunger, and 15 sanity. A fast cook time, but a bit unreliable as a main food, instead, replacing a stick and a meat for vegetables, Figatoni right, will provide a better 30 health, 56 and a quarter hunger, and 15 sanity, which is miles better than the frog berry and figgy frog witch, which just takes too much work for so little stats. The final fig recipe requires a koala fin trunk though, so after fighting off some hounds, I followed the trails with the help from my piggy friend, tracking down and killing the koala fin. Attack that freaking koala fin for me. Good job, pig. What's your name? Julian. Let's go, Julian. With Julian right on my tail, I put a fig, the trunk, and two sticks to cook, making fig stuffed trunk. With a massive 60 health and 56 and a quarter hunger, unless you really want those extra 20 health from one dish, eating the trunk cooked is probably a better choice, without mentioning how tedious the hunts are if you don't have a Julian. With this said, Figatoni takes the fourth spot, being better than honey ham, fig kebabs aren't really worth the work, landing it right under the regular kebabs, and the nose knows that everybody knows, straight to the bottom. As you can see, we now have all the top 15 filled, and all the remaining recipes will either go straight to the bottom or push the top ones out of the list, especially because oh our crops God. are now glowing. So a corn, honey, and sticks, I got powder cakes out of the way, which unlike autumn will last forever. So I really have to hurry on everything that won't be here during winter like the ponds. The world is only going to get a lot more intense from here, considering the Beekman fight would also be soon, so I made sure to equip Julian in case he came across any shadow creatures like me and continued the cooking. One fish, one stick, and two filler will make fish sticks, providing a massive 40 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 5 sanity. Overall an amazing dish followed by two raw kelp and two fish for California rolls which isn't as good but better with all the ingredients eaten separately. Just like the next dish with one corn, one fish and two sticks, fish tacos will take an extra specific ingredient while only giving 20 health meaning at best it's just easier to eat fish sticks and also drop them down below ambrosia with fish sticks in fourth place. Fancy spiral tubers is the last recipe from this batch but with only three health, 37 and a half hunger and 15 sanity it's probably better to just eat the potato cooked since it will provide more health, bringing it down to the elimination section and with winter just around the corner and almost all the easy to do recipes out of the way, you're probably thinking, how am I supposed to make Whirly's crockpot recipes? Well, let me ask you something. Do you have hair? Well, then look at Wes. Does he have hair? Of course not. And that's all thanks to the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. Now, originally, I would have never taken a sponsor for Manscaped because of just how much everyone talks to them and I don't even shave. I couldn't even grow a beard if I tried. But then I decided, why not give them a try? So, after doing some research, I found out that Manscaped is actually partnered with a test cancer society dedicated to saving balls. One man every hour, every day, is diagnosed with this type of cancer and it's something I really believe in, in raising awareness for it because it can be terrifying. Their new products like the Handyman, which I have, is made with you in mind so get it if you can afford it because it's truly a great investment with a great cost behind it not only helping me to keep making these videos for you but also for something many of us could get at any time and if you do decide to use the link and buy something use code pokesar for 20% off i mean they even have 30 days money back guarantee worst case you don't like it and send it right back anyways with the help from this trimmer we actually unlock unspoken west rig allowing us to make not only a birdcage but also a portable crock pot definitely not a mod since crops will take some work and time to get making an icebox is essential 
challenge. But the real problem here is that with winter right around the corner, I had to hurry up and find those barnacles now. Because come around winter, Bee Queen would be my only focus. The only real rule of barnacles is being near the deep ocean. More commonly than not, they will generate near the Munkwe Island, which will also be just as hard to find. But somehow, while heading to Pearls for some late night loving, I mean to get some kelp, I stumbled upon the exact <laughs> island right off the coast. There's no way I called that. What? I didn't bring much food or tools since I had no idea they would be here. But since winter was already here and I wouldn't be able to come back until spring, I took off in the brink of night to get those rare barnacles and then headed to the Munque Island. Winter meant all the monkeys would stay inside of their huts, meaning not worrying about getting robbed besides the ones that spawned from the portal. I would have just oh, left to try and right beat there. the cold, but since bananas grow only here and underground near the ruins, I decided to wait until the bushes grew to take care of that without losing more time exploring the ruins wait. later on. I killed a couple of fellow Hawaiians and I had to bribe the royal family once I got the bananas, but the cold was really against us now, forcing me to not only burn all of Pearl's belongings, but also Chester to get home. I made landfall what felt like days later, but my health was really low and I had to burn down everything I could to keep myself just above from dying, until I finally made it home, cooked some delicious tomatoes and got ready for another batch. Asparagus soup was first, with 20 health, 18.75 hunger and 5 sanity. Due to its need for a specific crop, it does increase its difficulty to get, but since I can be made with almost any other vegetable like red caps, it's not too bad. Winona's favorite dish of spicy vegetable stinger was next, with 3 health, 25 hunger and 33 sanity, which again not too bad but not too great. Since there's definitely easier way to get 30 extra sanity with less work putting both below the top 15. Unlike those two, the next 3 banana recipes are way better. Banana pops being Wendy's favorite dish will give us 20 health, 12 and a half hunger and 33 sanity with the downside of a fast spoil time. Banana shakes made with 2 bananas and 2 sticks giving 8 health, 25 hunger and 33 sanity, a bit less efficient per banana, and finally frozen banana they query, made using 1 banana and 3 ice, give us the best of all worlds, with 30 health, 18.75 hunger and 15 sanity, pushing it to the second place and pops and shakes a bit low. I also had a watermelon sitting around so I decided to take care of the melon sickle with a boost of 20 sanity but also cooling down the player 10 degrees and 10 seconds. Not the best during winter but also not enough to make the top 15 due to its fast spoil time. But there's something more important on the right. Now that winter was here, my priority had to shift. Not only were crops going to be growing a lot slower now, but the boss fight that would decide this run was right around the corner. The Bee Queen fight is a tedious one that takes skill, speed, and stats, so I gathered as much cactus for sanity and also prepared some Volt Gold Child Freud, which is worldly specific recipe that boosts my damage from 1.5 to 2.5 with 3 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 10 sanity. It's not the best, but due to its great versatility, making yeah, it into the, the top 10. Yeah. Keeping up with the worldly dishes, Fruit medley was next, using 3 fruit and a stick for 20 health, 25 hunger, and 5 sanity. If using pomegranates, it's honestly better to just eat the cooked version instead of making a dish since it will give a lot more health, meaning it's far from the top 15 material. Back to the fight, I had the sanity food ready, but healing is still crucial. And my best option is heading down to the caves and digging up some blue caps. I started wandering around trying to get them, but then I opened chest. At this point, the night were the longest they could be, the perfect for the Bee Queen fight, but there was no time to get new barnacles, and I had to hurry and cook these before they spoiled. I ran back home as fast as I could, knowing there was minutes before I lost all progress and possibly my record pace. I gathered all the ingredients I had nearby and Barnacle Pito was done first. 20 health, 37 and a half hunger and 5 sanity. Barnacle Linguini was next. 10 health, 75 hunger and 20 sanity at a solid dish that's inexpensive if you have barnacles nearby. And finally, by a miracle that I still had kelp left, Barnacle Nigiri with 40 health, 37 and a half hunger and 5 sanity of pure power. The barnacle recipes have been done, but the following night with the blue caps collected and the cacti cooked, the real match was about to begin. Bee Queen was going to be tough, but not enough for me. I summoned the twins at the same time to take them on too and I was right in the middle of it with my fresh handband violently sitting in my backpack. The first night was quickly over, getting the Bee Queen almost down half of her health. My next strategy was tiring her out and getting her dizzy by running her in circles until the next night when as soon as the twins came back, I was back to snacking them both around and completely and utterly real. I had Bee Queen right where I wanted her and she had nowhere to run, but just as I was about to land the final hit, the twins stole the kill from me. Instead of chasing revenge for the stolen oh kill, God. at this point, yes. I decided to just let them go since I knew that I scared them for the life and Bee Queen being killed was all that I needed. Jelly beans take yeah, one royal, royal jelly, jelly and three and filler, and known as the best healing dish in the game with giving 122 points of health over a course of two minutes. Ratatouille was my next victim, using one corn and three eyes for three health, 25 hunger and five sanity. After that, Mandrake Soup took one Mandrake, three filler, being close to the healing of Jelly Bean.
screens with 100 health, 150 hunger, and 5 sanity. But he's still using one morsel and 3 eyes, almost the same stat as Froggle Bunwich, and using 3 sticks and 1 meat item, the most well known recipe in the game, Wet Goop. Which gives absolutely nothing. Jelly beans being unspoilable and also being 3 per cook will of course rank in the top 10. But the other ones, due to their scarcity and unproductiveness, will go straight to the bottom. At this point, I'm almost through half of the recipes in the game. And so getting some big meat from Deerclops as well as an eye for an eye umbrella, I head to the other creatures with one eye to make the next pair of recipes which I will need their eggs to make. Being made exactly like Monster Lasagna but inside of Whirly's Rock Pod, Monster Tartar has the same effect as Lasagna but providing more hunger. Meaty Stew followed up, made up of all meat items and providing 150 hunger which is pretty good but nothing compared to tall scotch eggs made with one Talbert egg, one carrot and two sticks for a massive 60 health, 150 hunger and 5 sanity. Shooting it straight to the top only limited by its necessity of Talbert egg which aren't really that hard to farm. The other two don't even make the list though since their ingredients are better used for other recipes but now we move on to what could end up being the hardest part of this run. Spring was almost here so I prepared my field to make sure it was ready for farming and since I had taken so long to trap a bird I also still had to focus on making all the egg and fish based recipes. Only managing to get stuffed fish head with 20 health and 75 hunger before spring rolled around bringing a huge problem. In the start I had based around bee queen for the great fight but I had also accidentally set up way too close to a musku spawner which was now standing in the middle of my base. I didn't have time to relocate to another spot and didn't have time to waste on another boss fight but there was really no other way out of this. The fight was more tedious than hard, taking well over the night but I took it down with almost no problem. I thought I had no need for the loot from the goose but then I realized that drumsticks I needed for Wickford's favorite food were right here. Cooked it up, made a mushy cake using all four different types of mushroom and with all the meat from the mousse I could finally finish off the egg making recipes of a plain omelet for 3 health, 50 hunger and 5 sanity, breakfast skillet for 20 health, 37 and a half hunger and 5 sanity, but before I was able to pick it up and finish the last ones, things took a horrible turn. Ow bro what the I had already killed moose goose in the base but in the rush to cook I had left the giant egg to hatch. When the mooselings had spawned their mommy was already getting eaten and so they went after me. It wouldn't have been a problem but caught completely off guard my health was tanked from the start. I took some jelly beans to get my stats up to make a comeback but with dawn quickly approaching I had to take them out now or else it would be the end of the run. But then it got even worse. I was outnumbered with no speed bonus and nowhere to run trying to kill them as fast as I could. When suddenly night rolled around having to balance the light with my arm any wrong movement could end this and even a switch too slow would mean certain death. I checked the map to try stop, and get to a wormhole I knew it was stop, just around a corner but then oh my you stupid bird I was devastated but I wasn't about to be humiliated like this so I flew to the nearest touchstone and got everything I had in the base to jump back into the fight leaving some bacon and eggs on the crock pot for when I came back. I picked up all my stuff, made a log suit and headed back home with no sign of the mooselings but then I realized my bacon and eggs were gone. You don't mess with a man's bacon and eggs. They didn't even see me coming, but I took them down one by one by one by one. Until I was avenged my downfall, my sanity was very low, but it was all taken care of. I had wasted multiple days distracted by these I'm stupid ducks, but I had to rush the remaining okay, recipes as fast as possible. Pierogi was the first comeback. With one meat, one egg, and one vegetable, and a filler, 40 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 5 sanity. Focusing yeah, on the crops now, soothing teammate with forget me lots, one honey and two eyes gave me 45 sanity over one minute, 15 of it being instant, and in my opinion, one of the most underrated recipes in the game. Beefalo treats, unedible to players but great for healing beefalo, asparagus pacho with 2 asparagus and 2 eyes, not even worth mentioning how terrible it is, stuffed pepper poppers granting 30 health, 25 hunger and at the cost of 5 sanity, beefy greens using only 1 leafy meat at 3 vegetables for 40 health, 75 hunger and 5 sanity, froggle bunwich with 20 health, 37 and a half hunger and 5 sanity, puffed potato souffle just worse than cooked potatoes and pumpkin cookies with 37 and a half hunger and 15 sanity, only slightly better than the raw ingredients but things were about to change. The hunt for butter was about to start and it looked like things were going to be great. Being able to make waffles almost immediately, only really a bad recipe due to how hard butter is to come across for the 60 health, 37 and a half hunger and 5 sanity. But before diving into the tragedy head first, I headed back to the caves gathering all the ingredients I would need to make the cave recipes, picking berries, fishing and killing a nose to make the seafood gumbo, clove berry mousse and unagi which is just a useless eel recipe that's not worth 
worth of work, not good enough to make the top 15. However, the following events can only be described as beating every odd possible. At this point, it was day 50 and I still had 19 recipes left. On track to beat the world record, if I could make one recipe a day, I needed dairy for a couple of recipes, so I took one of the Eyes of Terror, cutting it like a boss and taking it down as fast as I could. But not before making some Bon Bouillon. For 32 health, 150 hunger and 5 sanity, it's honestly a great recipe for Whirling. Followed by Grim Galette, which main purpose is to swap your health and sanity, only useful in specific scenarios. As the night rolled around, however, the Eye of Terror was my only priority. Trying to get those milky whites and completely annihilating on day 53, putting together the milkmaid hat, some ice cream and some fish cordon bleu for 20 health, 37 and a half hunger and negative 10 sanity. A veggie burger from the lure plants that spawn during spring, giving 30 health, 37 and a half hunger and 33 sanity and giving up the hat to a loyal friend that had kept us safe for the whole run and everything was going perfect. Here, shut up. <laughs> what the heck? It looks so funny. With summer now here and the days as long as they could possibly be, my focus was now on the harder to get recipes, cooking up Wobster Bisque, which honestly doesn't get the love it deserves with how easy it is to get, providing a massive 60 health, 25 hunger, and 10 sanity, along with leafy meatloaf and some cactus flowers. That night, I made some delicious flower salad and salsa fresca using one onion, one tomato, and two ice for the win. But the time had finally come. The summer heat was only getting stronger, limiting me to what I could do without a cool thermal stone and so I began the most tedious and random job of this run getting butter. With a 2% chance of dropping from butterflies, it should take 50 butterflies to get at least one stick of butter. But as you can see by the wings in my inventory, that was far from the truth. However, even worse than this was a tragedy that would destroy the world as I knew it. Oh. His death was unforgettable and I let him know that he would never be forgotten. Julian was just a pig with a dream. He did it for us. He did it for the run. He helped us kill the eye. He helped us kill lure plants. He helped us kill butterflies. He killed hounds even. Bosses. He was one of the greatest. He'll live forever in our hearts. Today, tomorrow, and forever. But never forget, Ju Lian, the king, the pig, the man. It was pain like no other, but I had to keep going. Not for me, but for Julian. And so after making a dragon pie from Cursor Don't Starve and a creamy potato puree worth 20 health, 37 and a half hunger, and 33 sanity, I began the butter sucker. I killed during day, cooled during night, killed during day, and worked the whole night. It was much too work for a simple mind, so I hired some hounds to help me do it too. I kept hunting as many butterflies as I could, but it seemed like we were cursed with no butter. I kept farming all while doing this, managing to cook some rare makeka on day 68, but the real challenge seemed to have no end in sight. All the way till day 70 while I made hot dragon chili and since butter seemed to be an impossible accomplishment I moved towards the ocean on day 74 to see if I could find that narwhal again and get that desired big fish. It all seemed useless. I had nothing to show for the next couple of days, my hope was running low and all these recipes with only 3 days left was impossible. The record was so close I could almost taste it but as I was just about to give up Jakeosaurus hopped on the stream with words of encouragement. I couldn't give up now, I was so close, so I went at it with all I had. I set up a butterfly farm with a magma pond and got the two butter to make Wobster dinner and finally the oh best God, recipe in the game, fresh fruit crepes. It felt like the world had lifted off my shoulders, tasting those sweet crepes buttery and flavorly touched my lips but it still had work to do. I set up a boat to catch those big fish, time was against me and all I had was the wish of catching something but nothing was biting until out of nowhere it was all taken from me. With the couple of fish I caught before the disaster, I managed to make surf and turf, but with no boat, my only hope was to fish from the shore. A big fish was the only thing I needed, but with time running out, it seemed impossible. My only catch was useless, and when I saw some big fish in sight, they were quickly chased away by squid. Until time seemed to stop. It was this or nothing. The last struggle was this pull, and it knew it was the last straw from failure, so it fought. It was strong, but so was I. I pulled, and then I pulled, and we seemed to stalemate for what felt like days. Would I catch it? Would it get away? It was so close. It was right there. And I almost had it. When... Oh my god, guys. Did we get a big meat? <gasps> go, 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 go. I raced home. And I put it in the crockpot with everything else to make ceviche. Celebrating like no other accomplishment. 
boat. But it wasn't over yet. I headed to the lunar island with my last raft, putting down the last victim on my run, and with these two leafy meat and two honeycombs, it was finished. Jelly salad was the final one. Through this whole journey, through caves, oceans, friends, enemies, pirate, fishing, hunting, and after cooking every single recipe in the game, these are the 15 recipes I recommend all players to make. And when you're done checking them out and leaving your death threats in the comments because your favorite recipe isn't higher on the list, make sure you check out Manscaped in the pinned comments. I want to apologize publicly for not watching Pokestar's 100 day surviving in farm video, I'm so sorry.